Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Higgins Field at Chris Bradford Stadium, the home of St. Francis, and a baseball showdown here this afternoon between St. Francis of Mountain View and Bellman of San Jose, KMVT 15's presentation of high school sports. A beautiful afternoon here for baseball action at Chris Bradford Stadium, Higgins Field. Stephen Davies here with you. Once again, happy to have you here on a, well, you can't ask for a better day. Gorgeous spring afternoon here in Mountain View. Wind blowing out just to center field. It'll be interesting to see how the wind changes here today. It's certainly not quite as breezy as yesterday. St. Francis, a 17-1 record in the year, 4-1 in the West Catholic Athletic League. And as predicted at the start of the year, this West Catholic Athletic League is indeed wide open. Three teams competing at the top. Right now, Valley Christian, St. Francis, and Sarah, all with 4-1 and one records. Bellman, hot on their heels with a 3-2 and two record. And there's a look at the, the standings. But really, the top six teams are certainly in with a shout. St. Ignatius and Archbishop Mitty, not far behind. They are 2-3 and three on the year. St. Francis coming off a victory in the Elite Eight baseball tournament title game that was held here over Amador Valley of Pleasanton, a 1-0 victory last Thursday night. Um, Court Peterson, the star center fielder heading to UCLA next year, throwing out Amador Valley's Carmen Casperson at the play to end the game. A tremendous pitching performance by Stram, Chris Stram, um, Michael Stram, excuse me, the guy headed to Boston College next year. But it, considering the St. Francis scored 24 runs in the previous two games of that Elite Eight title game. Amador Valley certainly pitched them well, keeping them to just the one run. Let's go to the starting lineups then for the two teams. We'll begin with the home St. Francis Lancers leading off. We're in number two, the Santa Fila Court Peterson. Batting second, the second baseman Michael Stram. Batting third, Austin Gaboy. He'll be playing in left field today. Followed by the right fielder Hunter Simmons. Batting fifth, Tim Susnar. He will be behind the plate today. Mark Cardinale playing first base will bat six. Tyler Deason, third baseman, batting seventh. Chris Baker will bat eighth. And Eric Peterson, the DH for today's starting pitcher, John Gavin, 6 0 on the season. What a tremendous year he's had. 35 innings pitched, 40 strikeouts, just 18 walks, just giving up 17 hits and 14 runs on the season. This will be his eighth appearance on here, the big left-hander on the hill, completing his warm-up tosses for the visiting Bellman Bells of San Jose. Leading off, Joey Persons, certainly a man to watch on the base pass with six stolen bases on the year. He will play second base. Batting second, Scotty Jarvis, the shortstop. Batting third, Jake Whipple. He will be behind the plate today. Batting fourth, the left fielder, Andrew Mallon. The center fielder, Justin Calamini will bat fifth. The right fielder, Colby Punian, will bat sixth. Joey Pecoreno, who's playing first base today, will bat seventh. Batting eighth will be the third baseman, Brandon Wong, completing the batting lineup for the Bells, will be the designated hitter, Dylan Steele. Kevin Crane will pitch this afternoon for Bellman. He's four and two on the year, a 1.71 ERA. And this should be a fascinating encounter between these two teams here this afternoon. Ready to go then in the first pitch of the afternoon from John Gavin, the big left-handed pitching to Joey Persons. Here's the first delivery from Gavin, and that's outside for ball. Be Persons, Jarvis, and Whipple then for Bellman here in the top of the first inning from Chris Bradford Stadium in Higgins Field on the campus of St. Francis here in Mountain View. Second delivery hits Persons. And that's not the way Gavin was looking to start the game. It's the 12th time this season that he's hit a batter. And that's just on the second pitch. A little bit above the waist there as he tried to go inside on that pitch to Persons. So Persons quickly on here. And that'll bring up Scotty Jarvis. Jarvis batting 412 on the season. 14 hits and 34 at bats this season. 48 total plate appearances. Pitch out, and they might got it. They do have Persons napping on first base. A tremendous throw from Tim Cesnara down the line, and he wasted no time. 
Throwing across to Mark Cardinale at first base, and Persons is gone. Picked off first. Here's the delivery from Gavin, that's low. A laser down that first base line. And he got him by half a step. So ball one to Jarvis. And it'll be strike two, so one and two the count here to Jarvis. Jake Whipple will follow. Gavin from the third base side of the rubber, sets, delivers, off-speed pitch, and got him swinging. Nice pitch there by Gavin. Took a little something off that one. Quickly, two outs, and they'll bring up the catcher, Jake Whipple. Good looking pitch right at the knees. A little movement there, and Jarvis down swinging. His 41st strikeout of the year for John Gavin. So here's Whipple. And a pitch right at the belt for strike one. Andrew Mallon, the left fielder, will follow here for Bellman in the top of the first. No score. Story of this first inning, Joey Persons in the base on, well, getting hit by a pitch. Last we went around. Didn't, so that'll leave in the count of one and one here to Whipple. Long look in here from Gavin. Whipple a right-handed stick. Delivery's well outside. To the backstop, two and one. With two outs in the inning. Whipple batting 278 on the year, 10 hits, 36 at bats, 52. Total plate appearances, four doubles, five RBIs on the season so far. That pitch is going to be low. Good at bat here by Whipple. Trying to keep the inning alive here in the top of the first for the Bells. The Bells in the navy blue uniforms, the gray pants, the blue socks. The Lancers in the white with the brown hats. Gavin again, third base side, here's the delivery. And that's in there at the knees for a strike. Full count into Whipple. Take a step out of the box here. Crowd still filing in here to Higgins Field on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Time called in by Whipple. Three and two count coming up. Mallon to follow. Here's the delivery from Gavin. And that's going to be outside for ball four. So. Gavin walks Whipple. And that will bring up Mallon. It'll be interesting to see here Coach Mike Rodriguez, the Bellman head coach, will shorten up the lead that Whipple will take. We've seen Cesnaro already exhibit that strong arm to throw down the first base to pick Persons off after being hit by a pitch. Here's Mallon. Left-handed bat, that one's outside for ball one. Justin Calamini, the center fielder, will follow. Good year for Mallon so far, bang 282 on the year. 11 hits and 39 at bats. Just over for strikes, that evens the count at one and one. 12 RBIs and two home runs on the year for the senior. 1-1 one, one is swung on, hit to second. They've got it flipped to short. And that'll be the third out. So, Malin grounds out. 4-6. No runs, no hits, no errors. Through the middle of the first inning, no score. My parents are really slowing down. I feel bad I can't always be there for them. How do I choose between caring for my mother and caring for my own family? I've been looking into the options, but Dad doesn't want to leave his home. What do I do? Struggling to care for an aging parent? You are not alone. Learn how Home Instead Senior Care can provide the personalized in-home care your loved one needs. 
Home and Stem. To us, it's personal. Ever since we moved to the United States, Palo Alto Medical Foundation has been taking care of our health. We love our doctor. She is always ready to listen to us and is very professional and answers all our questions and is very reassuring. PAMP has been there not just for my own family but for the whole community, whether they're seeing patients or providing doctors for our free medical team. We are back at Higgins Field here at Chris Bradford Stadium on the campus of St. Francis High School in Mountain View, the bottom of the first inning coming up then. And the first time at the bat for the Lancers this afternoon. Court Peterson, Michael Stram, Austin Gaybord, the batters here for the Lancers in the bottom of the first. As we mentioned, Kevin Crane, the starter this afternoon for Bellman. Four and two on the season so far, 1.71 ERA. 22 hits given up and eight runs in 32 and two-thirds innings. Here's the UCLA bound center field and then Cor Peterson. His first plate appearance of the day. Crane, left-handed pitcher, staring for the sign. Peterson, left-hand bat. Here's the first delivery. Right around the ladders, a little high. That'll be ball one to Peterson. I'm going to monster year as our many of these lands have batted. 389 on the season, 21 hits and 54 at bats. Delivery from Gavin this time inside. Right around the same location, about the ladders. Paying both sides of the plate. Two balls, no strikes here to Peterson. Three home runs on the year, one double, 11 RBIs. 21 runs scored. That pitch is over for a strike. It's two and one here to lead off Lancer for the day. Michael Stram will follow for the Lancers. It's two one. Pitch is swung on and hit to second base. Fielded cleanly and a throw across the first. Tough play made over there by Joey Persons. Line drive was dipping towards him. He was able to square up and get the body behind it. So Peterson grounds out 4-3, and now we'll bring up Stram. Stram is senior. Second baseman, first delivery swung on. Hits a third, taking on a hop. Fires across the first and quickly two down. So Stram wastes no time. Grounding out 5-3. This game is brought to you by KMVT's All Sports presenting sponsors, the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, part of the Sutter Health Network. Choose your PAMF doctor today. Austin, Austin Gabor, his first at bat of the day. Left-handed stick. And pitches in there for a strike. Quickly two down in the inning. Ball playing left field today, batting third. Already down a strike here. That one hops in the dirt. Jake Whipple able to get behind it there. So ball and a strike now to Gabor. Hunter Simmons, the right fielder, will follow for the Lancers. Crane steps off the mound. It's a little touch of the rosin on his hand and gets back to work. That pitch low, two and one. And working from the third base side. Strems 2-1. Uh, Cranes 2-1, two, two excuse me. Is low. So 3-1 and one here now to Gabor. Gabor band 381 on the year. 16 hits and 42 at bats. 58 total plate appearances. 14 runs scored. Five doubles and two homers, 10 RBIs. That pitch is over for a strike. So full count now to the lanes to left fielder. Four. 
And Gabor thought that was ball four. He didn't already discarded the bat. The check with the umpire there it does indeed correct. Signal full count. Oh. Well, just a little over eager there, perhaps. Here's the full count delivery from Crane. It swung on and hit to right. Going back towards the wall. That's going to take a bounce off the wall. Now that, that signals a home run, it is. On a full count, Austin Gabor sends that over the right field wall. And the Lancers take a 1 0 lead. right around the belt and he got all of that one. A sweet swing indeed and that was muscled out to right field. Now batting. Right fielder number Good nine, three, 330, 340 feet out there to right center field. And the Lancers on Gabor's third home run of the year. Taking a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the first. So here's Simmons. Takes ball one from Crane. Grinding on a couple hops. Nice play made there. They can't get the hand on the ball. There's a nice sliding play there by Brandon Wong. Try to turn and hop up and make the throw to first, but couldn't get his hand on the ball and get it across the diamond in time. Yeah, just as he was trying to turn there and throw, just all came out of the glove. So, Simmons gets on base, and that brings up the catch at Tim Susnar, the fifth batter in the inning here for St. Francis. Whitey up by a run, thanks to the home run by Gabor. Crane's first delivery is swung on and missed by Susnar. Crane will look across the first. Shortly taken by Simmons here. Which is swung on and fouled off left side. So after giving up the home run to Gabor and the base hit to Simmons. Crane has two strikes here on Cesnara. It's now an extra step out the box here. The left hander steps in. Here's the 0-2 then. On its way from Crane. It'll be a throw across the first. Simmons back in time. 1-0 the Lancers lead here on the Gabor home run to right. Glance across the first. Here's a delivery tie. One and two. This is Nara batting just above the team batting average, 366. He's batting 380 on the year so far. The one two from Crane is swung on. Blue to shallow center field. Making the run ins the center fielder, Justin Calamini, for the third out. So Cisnara pops out to center, but one run, two hits. No errors in the inning. After one, it's St. Francis the one, Bellman zero. First one run on one hit. One Calamini. One inning in the books here from Higgins Field. Chris Bradford Stadium on the campus of St. Francis High School. KMVT 15 sports presentation of high school baseball. Stephen Davies, glad to be back with you on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon here in Mountain View. And the Lancers with the 1-0 lead after one inning. John Gavin, left-handed starter then for the Lancers, back to work. He will face Calamini, Punian, and Pecorino. First delivery then to Justin Calamini over for a strike. Calamini, as we mentioned, playing center field. Recorded that final out of the 
bottom of the first inning. And this is his first at bat here of the day. And he's quickly down two strikes. Gavin not wasting a lot of time on the hill. Waves off a pitch. And here's his delivery. And that's the <laughs> four strike. Wow, got Calamini looking. This game is brought to you by Home Instead Senior Care. Home Instead provides the personalized in-home care your loved one needs. Home Instead, to them, it's personal. Right fielder, number 10. Well, Gavin wasting no time dismissing Calamini. And now he's facing the left-handed bat, Colby Poonian. Delivery's low. One thing that strikes me early about John Gavin, he's a very composed pitcher out on the mound. Doesn't seem to show a lot of emotion. This is 1-0, and that's low as well. It's 2-0 now. Just gets the ball, sets himself, composes his thoughts, and gets right back to work. Take an extra second here to, uh, to adjust the socks. Just a quick chance to give you the dimensions. 325 to left with that high wall. 380 to left center field. 370 to straight away. 365 to right. I believe 315 down the right field line. Here's the delivery then. And that's at the belt for a strike on the inside corner. Two and one then to Poonian. And we've already seen Austin Gabor put one out over the right field fence to give St. Francis the 1-0 lead after one. That one's fouled right almost into the... Lance dugout. So I'll even the count at two and two. Fantastic facility they have here at St. Francis to be sure. Reminiscent almost perhaps of a minor league stadium if you like. The seating area in particular very close to the action here. Our vantage point here, the commentary position, 20 feet away. Here's a pitch that is waved at by Poonian. And that quickly is Gavin's third strikeout. No chance for Poonian on this pitch. Gavin takes a little something off. Poonian flails at it. And he's gone. The third K of the day then for Gavin. As we mentioned, 40 on the season so far. His first delivery inside to Joey Pecorano. So ball and no strikes. And 241 on the year. The junior first baseman for the Bells. Delivery from Gavin inside again. So 2 0 now. To the right handed batting Pecoraro. Brandon Wong, the third baseman to follow. That one's foul just down the line. Good cut there by Pecoraro. The third baseman, Tyler Deason, was playing about 10, 15 steps off the line down the third base side. It's two and one now to Pecoraro. Gavin sets and delivers. And that's in there for a strike. Long look from the umpire, but. Gavin certainly got that inside pitch working so far. 2-2 two, two count then. Time called by Pecoraro. None on here for Bellman. 2-2 two, two delivery. Gavin takes off speed and he got him looking. Gavin strikes out the side. Gets Calamini looking, Poonian swinging, Pecoraro looking. What an inning from John Gavin. Four Ks and through one and a half. Bellman it's St. Francis there. one. No no Bellman no zero. No Back then for the bottom of the second inning. Here at St. Francis High School in Mountain View, KMVT 15. Mountain View, Los Altos, Cupertino, Stephen Davies here with you from Higgins Field. Ball in the second inning then. Cardinale, Deason, and Baker for the Lancers. And that's the first delivery to Cardinale. He's fouled off left side. Cardinale, the senior first baseman. 
his first at bat of the day. He'll be followed by the junior, Tyler Deason. Caught an alley, steps out of the box. Was a little extra time. Kevin Crane surrendering that home run to Austin Gabor in the first. Also gave a base hit to Hunter Simmons. That one's grounded to short on a couple hops. Nice recovery though. Did they get him? They did. Great play over there at short by Scotty Jarvis. Hard hit ground ball. Took a couple of hops in front of him. Was able to get the body behind him. And that was the crucial play there because although a little trouble handling it. Good throw across to first base in time to get Cardinale. As Cardinale grounds out 6-3 and I'll bring up the left-handed bat of Tyler Deason. As we mentioned, a junior batting 417 on the year, 15 hits and 36 at bats, a total of 42 plate appearances. Three doubles, nine RBIs, four runs scored. And he takes the first delivery for a strike. Chris Baker, the senior, will follow. So one out here already. And there's a curveball in there for a strike. Good pitch from Crane that time. He's quickly up two strikes here on Deason. Both per pitches working quickly here today. Bellman, as we mentioned, at the top of the broadcast, three and two in West Catholic Athletic League play, just a game behind St. Francis. Here's the curveball, this time low. And now will bring the count to one and two here in favor of Crane. Crane from the belt, delivers, pitch is swung on and missed. Nice pitch there to get decent swinging. And that's Crane's first strikeout of the day. Coming to play the shortstop, number 11, Chris Baker. Took a little something off that offering, and Deason goes down swinging. And that brings up shortstop Kevin, well, Chris Baker, excuse me. Senior right-hander swings and misses at the first offering from Crane. Yes, Crane would certainly like to end the inning with a, another strikeout here to add to his tally. Already one on the day. Here's a pitch waved at by Bacon. He's quickly down two strikes. Designated hitter Eric Peterson. The senior will follow. Third base side, delivery is just over the outside corner. A long look from the umpire there, but just a little outside. Crane goes to the rosin bag here. Quickly back up on top of the hill. One and two the count then. Left hand is delivery, swung on and missed. And he gets Baker swinging, so good response there from Kevin Crane as he gets Chris Baker and Tyler Deason swinging. No runs, no hits, no errors. And after two complete from St. Francis High School, it's St. Francis 1, Bellman 0. Top of the third inning then for Bellman. And, well, if you're John Gavin, quite the inning he had as he got Calamini looking, Puni and Swing and Pecoraro looking in that top of the second, striking out the side. And you can imagine he's raring to go here as he faces Brandon Wan, Dylan Steele, and Joey Persons. It's really settled down after hitting Persons to open this game. Already with four strikeouts. And there's a first pitch strike to Wong. Wong, a right-handed bat. And just 176 on the year. Three hits and 17 at bats. Skies that went to shallow right. Second baseman comes over and claims it. Now it's Michael Stram under it for the out. So Wong hops out to second base and I'll bring up the designated hitter, Dylan Steele. 
The steal. Number 16, Dylan Just his fifth Steele. plate appearance of the season. Batting 500, two of four. Batting in place of starting pitcher Kevin Crane. Both teams implying designated hitters today. Pitch a little high there from Gavin for ball one. Here is the 1 0, and that's to the backstop. 2 0 here to the ninth batter in the order. The top of the order coming up then for Bellman with Joey Persons. He'll be followed by Scotty Jarvis. The 2 0 then from Gavin. It's low again, 3-0. and oh. So after the first pitch strike and the second pitch swinging from Wong, three straight balls here from Gavin, and that'll be number four. So he walks the ninth batter in the order on four pitches, and Bellman have a base running here in the top of the third inning. No immediate cause for concern here, but probably not a bad idea for Cisnara to come out and just have a quick chat with the big left hander here closest he came to walking another batter was Whipple back in the first and they went to well, actually did walk him on a full count so four K's two walks in addition to the batter hit by a pitch there's a curveball over a strike to Persons. Jarvis to follow. Runner on first. Dylan Steele. This person's second at bat of the day. He was hit by a pitch, of course, in the first. And then on the very next pitch, he's picked off first base. Crowd still filing in here. Gorgeous afternoon here in Mountain View. She swung on, grounded down the first base line. Gavin comes across, feels it in time for the out. So Gavin quickly off the mound there and not the best hit ball by Persons. So he's so he's gone one three for the first out, but that moves Steele down. Gavin using his hand and his glove that scoop that one up and able to throw across to Cardinale in time for the out. So that brings up Jarvis. Bellman with a man in scoring position here. Steal on second base. St. Francis Lee 1 0 here in the top of the third. Here's the delivery from Gavin. And Cesnara does well to get low to prevent that one from going to the backstop. So 1 0 the count here. I feel back almost towards the edge of the dirt if there was a dirt infield here it's a crescent that marks the line around the infield here Stram almost played right back on that line he's a throw back to second and again Cisnara displaying a strong arm steal Perhaps recognize him from the first inning when Persons was thrown out at first. Scampering back to the bag, diving in time. One and one to count them to Jarvis. And we saw during the warm ups here in particular, Cesnara. Very strong arm from behind the plate. The one one then. Pitch is swung on and miss. Good pitch by Gavin there, low in the dirt. Tailing away from the right handed batter. And a 1-2 count here. With two outs. Melman would love to keep this inning alive if possible. 1-2 and two then to Jarvis. Here's the delivery. Pitch is low. 2-2. Two and two.
Gavin taking the signs there from Baker over at short. So it takes a little extra time here with the runner on. Two and two, two outs. Top of the third, runner on second for Bellman. Here's the delivery, pitch is swung on. Blooper to short. Right center field, Stram is under it. And he'll reel it in for the third out, so. Jarvis pops out to second for the third out in the inning. Bellman still without a base hit. And after two and a half, it's St. Francis one, Bellman zero. Back with you for the bottom of the third, KMVT 15, Mountain View, Cupertino, Los Altos. Steve Davies here with you on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Glad you could join us. Close matchup so far between St. Francis and Bellman. The Austin Gabor home run in the first. The difference as the Lancers lead 1-0. 9-1-2 and two hitters up. Bunt laid down here by the ninth bat. Eric Peterson hustling down the line. He's in there as that throw from Brandon Wong just a little bit too strong there. Showed Bunt right at the last second. Drops it down well. Wong hustling in. Takes it with a glove. And just perhaps got a little overexcited. I think Peterson would have beaten it down the line anyway. But they're able to keep the runner on first. Now back to the top of the order. And Cole Peterson. He'll lay down Bunt too. And they're going to say it's foul. Coach Oakland out for a word here, and that certainly looked like he got it down. Both umpires quickly saying that it went foul. They don't have a quick discussion here. Coach Oakland, I think, trying to say Peterson had two or three steps already out of the box. See if we can get a, a replay of that here momentarily. Well, it certainly looked good from here, but umpires with a, a different view. Oh, one the counter throw back to first, trying to shorten up the lead taken by Peterson. So own one here to Court Peterson, Eric Peterson on first for the Lancers. Take a healthy lead at first. Crane's delivery is high. Feel playing in at third. That's Wong about play about six, seven steps in here along the third base line. Crane trying to keep an eye on Eric Peterson as well. The one-one as Court Peterson shows bunt. Lays it down. Crane spins and fires in time for the out. Nice job there by Kevin Crane. Pressure was certainly on there and does well to feel the ball spin and throw it on target to Pecoraro for the out. Just a little bit too strong on the bunt there from the Court Second Peterson. Base, 10, well, he laid it down well. And you see Crane turning and firing in time for the out. So Court Peterson grounds out for the second time. But it does move Eric Peterson down to second. So Lance is threatening here with one out. And here's Michael Stram. Grounded out in the first. Crane fakes second. Now steps off. One out in the inning. And the Lance is up 1 0 here in the third. Dangerous Austin Gabor already with a home run on the day to follow for the Lances. Crane's pitch, hacked at, into shallow left field, and it's fallen between the fielders. Peterson rounding third, that's as far as he gets as he slides in. And a, certainly a mix-up in communication there between short and left field. Appeared that was Jarvis's ball, I would think. Yeah. Half swing there, but problematic indeed for the fielders. On comes the left fielder, Malin, but he's unable to 
make the catch as he went into a slide. So what you would assume is an error. I think, I think perhaps give him a base hit. We'll see now after the inning. But either way, this is a dream scenario here for the Lancers. Runners on the corners now. Eric Peterson on third. Stram on first. And Gabor already with a home run on the day. A chance to add to the Lancer lead. Here's a curveball from Crane. And it's a good pitch to Gabor for a strike. And don't forget, Crane went full count on Gabor in the first inning. Before the left fielder smashed it over the right field wall for a homer. Two on here for Gabor. 0 oh, 1 count. Here's Crane's delivery. Curveball is grounded up the middle. Tough field there, but he's able to get one. Peterson will score. Gabor hit that one right up the middle. It's a stram out at second base. And it was a nice job there by, um, by Joey Persons to flip that to Jarvis for the second out. So Strem's the second out. Gabor now on first. And Peterson scores to give St. Francis a 2-0 lead. So an RBI there for Gabor. Ball one, then two, Hunter Simmons. Single back into first. Swings and misses at that one. And that evens the count of one and one. Two outs and in the inning. Gabor on first. And he's really been the danger man so far for the Lancers. Ready with a home run. A single and an RBI. A throw across from Crane. But Gabor back to the bag standing. 1-1 one, one the count. Two outs in the inning. One run in the first. One in the third. Oh, and Crane thinks he got him, did he? They did indeed, so Crane picks off Gabor first. And Gabor just went two or three steps too far forward and then he was actually got underneath the tag, but let's see. Barely touched him if he did. Well, it's a close one, but the umpire was right there to, to make the call. I think even Crane was a little, a little surprised, but either way, Gabor is picked off first for the third out of the inning. So after three in the books here, it's St. Francis two, Bellman zero. Ever since dad died, taking care of mom is overwhelming. I can't do it on my own. Sure, my mother needs me, but I just want to be a daughter again. Mom wants to stay in her home, but needs more help than ever. It just can't be me all the time. Struggling to care for an aging parent? You are not alone. Learn how Home Instead Senior Care can provide the personalized in-home care your loved one needs. Home Instead. To us, it's personal. As a busy mom of three kids, I find it extremely convenient to access My Health Online. My Health Online's messaging service allows me to keep in close contact with our doctor. Being able to email the doctor with questions gave us assurance that they do take an interest in the patients. That's why we've been with Pam for more than 10 years and keep adding members, the newest member. Halfway through this game then at Higgins Field at Chris Bradford Stadium, Stephen Davies here with you. St. Francis, two runs on four hits, no errors. Bellman, however, still looking for their first hit of the afternoon. They'll bring up their three, four, and five hitters, Whipple, Mallon, and Calamini, to try and cut into this Lancer advantage. Austin Gabor, as we mentioned, a home run in the first. Singled home Eric Peterson in the third before ending the inning with by being picked off. So that brings up the bells and in the top of the fourth, 
Whipple, Mal, and Calamini. So here's Whipple in. Walked in the first to a full count from Gavin. First delivery is over from a strike. Gavin takes a second here as Whipple steps out. Take a couple more cuts here. Great crowd and attendance here. Both in the stands and down here in the viewing deck, I suppose, behind the plate. Here's the 0 1 pitch that swung on, hit smartly down the left field line. And that could be a double at least. Rounding first is Whipple, and he's on his way to second standing. Whipple keeps his hands inside and strokes a double down the left field line. So Bellman with that first hit of the afternoon. You see the third baseman playing about 10, 15 steps off the line. No chance to field that one. For Tyler Deason. And so the Bells have a runner in scoring position and no outs. So it's up to the fourth batter, Andrew Mallon, to try and get the Bells their first run of the afternoon after the double by Whipple. Gavin's pitch is inside for a ball. Mallon grounded out 4-6 to end the first inning. It'll be interesting to see how Coach Rodriguez plays the game on the base paths here. Paying a lot of attention at the moment to Whipple. But as we've seen, Cesnara in particular has a very strong arm. A look back from Gavin then. Here's the 1-0 that's flailed at by Mallon. And even to count at one and one. Calamini sent a fielder to follow for the Bells. These two teams, longtime rivals in the West Catholic Athletic League, separated by just a game in the league. Should Bellman pull out the victory here this afternoon, it would become certainly a crowded race at the top of the West Catholic Athletic League. Valley Christie and St. Francis and Sarah all 4-1 records at the moment. Now time was called right as Gavin's pitch was delivered. Two zero St. Francis lead then in the top of the fourth, but Jake Whipple providing the first hit of the afternoon for the Bells. And now it's up to Andrew Mallon to continue the hit parade. One and one the count then. Whipple on second. Pitch in the dirt. And Cesnara does well to get his body behind that one. So two and one. Now to Mallon. He's trying to see here if Mallon can force Gavin to throw some pitches to him here. Wait for his pitch. 2-1 delivery then is swung on foul back to the screen. So that evens the count of 2-2. Two two. Well, Mallon certainly got a pitch he liked that time. Fouled that up into the screen behind home plate. Changing the body language here from Gavin. Perhaps slowing the tempo of this game down just that little bit. On the third base side. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Which is swung on and hit to center field. They run under it there for the first out of the inning. KMVT Sports would like to thank Home Instead Senior Care for their continuing support or continuing support of high school sports programming. Home Instead to them, it's personal. We certainly like to thank them for our uh, continuing high school sports coverage here on KMVT 15. And we certainly couldn't do it without their support. One out then in the inning as Mallon flies out to center field. And that brings up Justin Calamini. He's, he went looking in the second. One of four strikeout victims on the afternoon so far for Bellman. Here with a runner on second and one out. Bellman trailing by two. Pitch low and in the dirt. Cesnara couldn't find it there for a moment, but Calamini 
Signal straight away to Whipple to hold Pat at second base. It's only the right call with Cesnara's strong arm. Ball in relatively close proximity. Wind picking up just a little bit. It's certainly swirling. We've seen it blow across from left to right. We've seen it blow out towards center field. Now a throw back to second. That's close and they got him. Wow. A laser thrown from Gavin. Across to Chris Baker and Whipple couldn't get underneath the tag. So he's picked off second base. Oh, I don't think Whipple expected that at all. Gavin, the perfect throw right on the money to Baker. Applies the tag. And a once promising inning here for Bellman with a runner on second base. After a double or leadoff double from Whipple. He's now turned into two outs and the base is empty for Calamini. Coach Rodriguez there, a couple of words for the first base umpire. Here's a 1-0 then from Gavin, and that's over for a strike. It's time called then. Coach Rodriguez wants a word with his senior center fielder. Gavin has certainly not provided the Bells with very many chances this afternoon. Perhaps the best one they've had has gone begging with Whipple picked off second base. It's the second time today. St. Francis has been able to pick off a base runner for Bellman. Here's Persons in the first after being hit by a pitch. And then following the double from Whipple, he gets picked off second. Previous delivery for ball. Here's 2-1. And that's at the knees for a strike. 2-2. Two two. Calamini's already been struck out once. Looking back in the second. Will this be the second time? 2-2 two two then. Gavin waves off pitch. Left hand to come set. Here's a delivery. That's low. That's a full count. Colby Punian will follow the right fielder for the Bells. Full count, then. two outs. Deliveries in there for a strike. The fifth strikeout of the day for John Gavin. Second time Calamini goes looking in the game so far. No runs, one hit, no errors. And after three and a half, St. Francis two, Bellman zero. Bottom of the fourth then from St. Francis High School. Simmons, Cesnara, Cardinale then for the Lancers, up 2-0. And Kevin Crane back to work for the Bells. Simmons single back in the first inning after the Gabor home run. Second plate appearance of the day, that one from Crane low. So the count evens at one ball and one strike. Here's the 1-1 one, one. that's in there for a strike. Curveball over the outside corner. Simmons a glance at the home plate umpire just to be sure. So after surrendering runs in the first and the third, certainly on the shoulders of Crane now. And there's a good pitch for a K. His third strikeout of the game so far as he gets Hunter Simmons swinging. And I'll bring up Tim Sosnara. And with the Bell's obvious struggles 
on the offensive side of the field. Certainly a lot of the responsibility here will fall on the shoulders of Kevin Crane to keep the Bells in this game. And that's the perfect way to start off the inning as he gets Sims swinging for the first out. So that brings up Cesnara. Left-handed bat. Right around the ladders. A little too high. One ball, no strikes. Cesnara flight out to center field. And his first plate appearance back in the first. That's grounded on a couple hops. A little too strong, picking it up and firing across, not in time. So Cesnara is aboard with a single. Good contact there. And Persons range a long way to his right there. Couldn't pick it up cleanly. Was able to fire across, but Cesnar, decent speed for a catcher, able to beat the throw. And the Lancers have a runner on here. And Cardinale at the bat. Grounded out 6-3 in the second. Cardinale first pitch swing, and that's going to go all the way to the wall. Cesnar around second. He's on his way to third. Ball still back at the wall. Cesnar is around third, and he's coming home. And Cesnar is in, sliding to the plate. As St. Francis get their third run. Cardinale down to second base. And he scores Cesnara from first. Cesnara with an RBI. Kept his hands inside there and all kinds of space down that third base line. We saw it on the Whipple double for Bellman. Back in the fourth inning, both third base giving a lot of space down the third base line, but perfectly placed base hit by Cardinale. And the Lance is looking for more up 3 0 here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's Tyler Deason, struck out in the second. Runner on second now, Cardinale. Probably about three or four feet inside the third base line. That base hit from Cardinale rolled all the way to the wall. Gee, over into the corner there, along the fencing. Decent swings and misses at that one. That evens the count at a ball and a strike. But Cardinale, who says Nara chugging around second, gave his catcher plenty of time. And he was able to slide into home plate for the third run of the day for the Lancers. They lead 3-0 then. Curveball's over for a strike. One and two then to Deason. Chris Baker will follow. So after Crane struck out Simmons to open this fourth inning, Cesnara single, Cardinale doubled. And with just one out, the Lancers are in a prime opportunity to get more runs on the board. It's caught an alley at second. Here's the delivery from Crane. It's swung on and hit to right field and foul. Decent certainly gave that one a good ride. But the count remains at one and two. And now Crane wants a word with Jake Whipple. Quick conference between the battery mates here and Crane ready to get back to work. No doubt aware of the runner on second here. The one two then from Crane. Curveball low. Two and two. Shortstop Chris Baker to follow. You have to share, guys. Thank you, honey. I'm sharing the lights. Here. Just put some in your pocket, okay? Decent left handed bat. Pitch is grounded down the first base line on a couple of hops. They take it for the second out. KMVT Sports presenting sponsor is the Palo Alto Medical Foundation part 
of the Sutter Health Network. Choose your PAMF doctor today. Pecoraro able to get his body behind the ball there on that second out. No doubt playing across along the line as we saw Cardinale stroke one down the third base line with no chance for the third baseman to cover. That's how Pecoraro covering first. And he gets the second out. So here's Bacon then. Already a two ball, no strike count in his favor. He struck out as well back in the second inning. And he'll be followed by designated hitter Eric Peterson. Bottom of the fourth and 3 0. The Lance lead. And that pitch is low as well. So. Crane here perhaps laboring a little bit in this inning. Started out with the strikeout of Simmons and gave up back-to-back -back hits. He will get decent on the put out at first. And the hitters count here as he walks Baker on four pitches. So the Lance is now with runners on the corners. Cardinale on third, Baker on first, and Peterson, the designated hitter, wearing number 15 at the plate. Already with a single to his credit in the third inning. In his second appearance at the plate in this game so far. First delivery from Crane is low. And Whipple does well to contain that one, so ball no strikes into Peterson. Top of the order, Court Peterson to follow should Eric Peterson get on base. Runners on the corners, Cardinale on third, Baker on first. The 1 0 is foul tipped. And it evens the count at a ball and a strike. Peterson batting 350 on the year with seven hits and 20 at bats. That's five RBIs and a triple to his credit on the season so far. And they've really had contributions up and down the order. As we mentioned, a team batting average of 366. 182 total hits and 497 at bats coming into tonight's game. So certainly prolific with the bat in their hands are the Lancers. Runners on the corners then. Off goes Baker from first base and he gets down uncontested. As Whipple has a little trouble dealing with that delivery from Crane. And that brings the count now to two and one. On Eric Peterson as Baker steals second base. So Cardinale now in third. Chris Baker down to second. And a two and one count here to Crane. So wait for the sign from Whipple here. Comes set. Here's the delivery. The 2 1 is grounded to first. Pecorero has it. Fires across. Crane can't take it. And that will bring both runners home. Well, Peterson was, or Cardinale, excuse me, was running on contact, but then Baker was also moving. Let's see. Here's the replay. Pecorero came across. Crane was on the move. They're trying to beat Peterson to the to the base, but just couldn't get his hit glove on the ball. And because Pecorero threw that one away, enabled Baker to take off from third base. So both Cardinale and center fielder number two for Peterson. Baker score. Peterson now with two singles, although we'll see if. That one's uh, given as an error on, on um, Crane. But either way, the Lance is now leading this game 5-0 in the bottom of the fourth inning. The top of the order then coming up. And 
it's one ball. No strikes here to Court Peterson on the top of the order. That one's fouled off right side. Count evens at one and one. So a great day for the bottom of the order here for uh, St. Francis and Eric Peterson in particular. A single in the third. And assuming his hit counts, a single and two RBIs in the second at bat of the day. Throw across the first, shorten up Eric Peterson's lead. Count still one and one here on Court Peterson. So looking for his first hit of the day. He grounded out in both plate appearances. That's a good pitch from Crane firing down the first, not in time as Peterson takes off and steals second base. Great pitch there from Crane to get Court Peterson swinging over the outside corner of the plate, firing down to second, but just couldn't get there in time as Eric Peterson had a good jump off first. So ball and two strikes then. Court Peterson and Crane would do well to get out of the inning. Here's the one-two delivery, the curveball at the ladders inside. Count two and two now to Court Peterson. Crane still weary of the runner on second and a quick look back to shortstop Jarvis. Here's the 2-2. Peterson swings, grounds it to second, fire across to Pecorero in time for the third out. So Peterson, caught Peterson 0 for 3 so far. It hasn't mattered because the rest of the St. Francis order have picked up the slack. After four complete, it's 5 0. On the fourth, three runs on two hits, one error. I'm going to scratch that. These are compliments. Back with you on KMV, KMVT 15's presentation of high school baseball, St. Francis and Bellman. Top of the fifth inning. And John Gavin has been on cruise control so far. Surrendered just the one hit back in the fourth inning to Jake Whipple. But apart from that, it's been a nigh on perfect performance from the big left hand. They're already with five strikeouts on the day. It's going to be Pooney and Pecorero and Wong here in the top of the fifth. Pooney struck out in the second, the second at bat and played appearance of the day so far. And he fouls off the first offering from John Gavin. Oh, won the count. Delivery swung on a miss. Gavin has a, a couple moments where he's uh, a little bit off the rails, in particular walking steel to open the third inning, but certainly locked down since. Pitch is swung on, foul back out of play. Count remains 0-2. He'll be followed by Pecorero. The 0-2. Came with a fastball high, but a little bit high and outside. One and two now to Poonian. The junior band 316 on the year, six hits, 19 at bats. Two doubles, a triple, a home run, and six RBIs. And that pitch is swung on and missed. Well, Gavin is certainly locked in at the moment. The sixth strikeout of the day so far. And that off-speed pitch. It's working like a charm at the moment. Gavin, just a junior. Will be back for his senior year. We all know St. Francis, one of the top, if not the top, baseball team in all the state. Certainly establishing those credentials with a 17 and one mark going into today's game. Yeah. 
strike one. We have a pinch hitter up here for Bellman. In place of Pecorero, that's James Gaffs. So Gaffs batting in Pecorero's position. And we've also got a pitcher warming up in the bullpen for St. Francis. That'll be Ryan Johnson. So Gavin, two and one here now to James Gaffs. Actually, three and one, excuse me. Three and one count then to Gaffs. And that pitch is low for ball four. So the third walk issued by John Gavin. Now that is third baseman number 20, Brandon Wong. Efficient afternoon for the junior. As we mentioned, six Ks, three walks, just the one hit surrendered. It's Jake Whipple in the fourth, a double down the third base line. Here's Brandon Wong now. Grounded out to second in the third inning. Pitch is swung on and hit to the screen right side. Ball and a strike the count here to Brandon Wong. Senior band just 176 on the year. Gavin waves off sign, one and one count here, one out in the inning. Gaffs on first, a throw down at first, but not in time. Again, Cisnara not wasting any time. He sees an opportunity. That's how I'm trying to catch Gaffs napping on first. Pitch outside to Wong, two and one here. Now throw across the first, showing up Wong's lead. Here's Gavin's 2-1, Gaffs goes, it's the pitch is swung on and foul back to the screen. Two and two now. Well, Gaffs got to jump off first. <laughs> he was keeping his head down there in particular as he was hopefully noticing, or hopefully that Cesnara wouldn't notice him trying to take second base. Let's see if he goes on contact here. Two and two the count. Curveball in there from Gavin, and Wong is gone swinging. Two strikeouts now in the inning. John Gavin. And that's number seven on the day for the junior left-hander. Dylan Steele then will make his second plate appearance. Gavin walked him on four pitches back in the third. 5-0 the Lance the lead. Pitch outside from Gavin for ball one. Just steals six at bat now of the season. As we mentioned limited playing time on the season thus far. And that's ball two. Says Nara out for a word. Gavin, for the most part, has mowed down this Bellman lineup, but when it's come to the ninth batter in the form of Dylan Steele, he's uh, thrown six consecutive balls to him. So, Cesnara telling the junior here to probably just take your time. He's one out away, getting through five innings here for the Lancers. Gavin's 2 0 is in their first strike. Two and one. Top of the order to follow. And Joey Persons. Two outs in the inning. Gaffs on first base. Pinch hitting and running in place of Pecoraro. Throw across to first base. Not in time.
Gavin will step off and throw across the first. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, doesn't show a lot of emotion when he's out on the hill. Here's the delivery that's swung on and hits a shallow right center field. Under it is the center fielder for the third out. As Court Peterson takes out one in stride, so Steele flies out to center. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on. And through five, it's St. Francis five, Bellman zero. We were through, through four and a half after that last half inning, so here come St. Francis in for the bottom of the fifth inning. 5-0 the lead, and it's Stram, Gabor, and Simmons for the Lancers. Here's Stram, then his third at bat of the day. Reached on a fielder's choice back in the third and grounded out 5-3 in the first. Kevin Crane still up on the mound then for the Bells. That pitch is grounded to short. Fires across the first, and it's bobbled at first base by James Gaff. So for the second time today, Stram is aboard. And we would assume on the E3. Certainly handled well over at short by Scotty Jarvis, but James Gaffs in place of Joey Pecorero first base, unable to get a glove on it. And here's the dangerous Gabor. A home run in the first, a single in the third. Already with two RBIs on the day. But he was picked off first back in the third inning. The only blemish on an otherwise excellent performance so far for the senior. Gabor, left-handed bat. Crane's delivery is well short at the target. However, it will allow Stram to advance to second on the pass ball. So ball, no strikes into Gabor. Hunter Simmons will follow. Stram, Gabor, Simmons, the first three batters for the Lancers here in the fifth. As we mentioned, they do have a pitcher up in the bullpen. Thought it was Johnson, the junior. A little difficult to see his number from our commentary position. But you would assume after the sterling effort by John Gavin to get through five innings, one hit, seven Ks, a couple of walks, a comfortable lead that his day may be over after this inning. Crane's 2-0 is low. 3-0 then to Gabor. <laughs> Runner on second is Stram, reached on an error. Took second on the pass ball. The 3-0 is high, so Gabor walks. And he's been on board all three times today. Hunter Simmons then, with no outs in the inning, has a chance to blow this game open, leading by five here in the bottom of the fifth. This game is brought to you by Home Instead Senior Care. Home Instead, to them, it's personal, and the Palo Alto Medical Foundation. Choose your PAMF doctor today. Conference on the mound then between Whipple, Crane, and Coach Rodriguez. While Coach Oakland wants a word with his base running tandem of Gabor and Stram. Stram on second, Gabor on first. So Crane just trying to get his bells through this 
bottom of the fifth inning and try and minimize the damage here. Simmons will be followed by Cesnara. No outs in the inning. As we mentioned, a real chance here for the Lances to put some distance here between themselves and the Bells. Leading 5-0 here, bottom of the fifth. First pitch to Simmons is high for a ball. It's Crane back up on top of the hill. Two on then for the Lances. You're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Crane. From the third base side as the shadows begin to creep across Higgins Field. The 1-0 is low for ball two. Great season for the senior, Hunter Simmons. 340 batting average, 17 hits in 50 at bats, 10 RBIs, a double end, or triple, excuse me, in a home run. And hit his count here. He fouls that one off to the backstop. Two and one. Says Nara already with a single on the afternoon to follow. Mentioned St. Francis is 17 and 1 overall record on the season. Bellman, no slouches either. They're 13 and 4. But it's been all St. Francis today. Timely hitting and strong performance by John Gavin, who's on his way to his seventh victory of the season. He was 6 and 0 coming in. Here's a delivery, that's fouled off left side. Count even is a two and two. Gavin yeah, in a 2.40 ERA coming into. This afternoon's encounter. Long looking from Gavin then, here comes the two two. And that's swung and hit down the third baseline for foul. See Simmons waiting on that pitch there, keeping his hands back and the swing compact there through the zone, but just fouled that off. Not a lot of foul ground here on either side, and it certainly shortens as you make your way towards the outfield. Only about 15 feet or so down towards the wall and left. That one's fouled off right side into the parking lot. Count holds it two and two. Stram on second, Gabor on first. Stram reaching on the E3. Took second on the pass ball. Gabor on first thanks to a walk on four pitches from Crane. And Simmons here with a 2-2 count. We'll look back from Crane. Here's the delivery. Pitch is grounded through the gap between third and short. Stram will hold at third. And for the first time today, the Lancers have the base is loaded thanks to Hunter Simmons' second base hit of the afternoon. So Simmons will take a seat as they bring on Ryan Johnson, the junior, to pinch run. The Bells really have an opportunity now to put this game away here in the bottom of the fifth. Sesnara. Flight out in the first, singled and scored in the fourth. His third plate appearance then of the day. And an opportunity now to 
put this game out of reach. The Bells struggled all game long on offense, just managing the one hit in the fourth inning right, off Jake Whipple Texas. with a double. Cesnara chomping at the bit here as he awaits the first delivery from Crane. It's low and in the dirt. Whipple gets down to prevent that one from rolling to the backstop. So one ball, no strikes. Mark Cardinale will follow. Snar singled and scored back in the fourth inning. You have three runs come across in that fourth inning. Says Nara led it off after he singled. Cardinale doubled. Baker walked. And then Peterson, reaching on the error, was able to score both Says Nara and Cardinale. Pitch over for strikes. Two and one now to Says Nara. Stram on third, Gabor on second. Johnson, the pinch runner on first. Here's a 2-1, pitch is swung on, blooped to shallow center. Making a run, all three players can't get to it. One run is home, that's Stram. And a bloop single then from Sesnara to shallow center field. Brings home Stram, and it's 6-0 St. Francis. Really hit into no man's land. No chance for the shortstop, second baseman, or the center fielder to reel that one in. A perfectly placed bloop single then from Cesnara, and that's his second hit of the ball game. Coming to play for the Lancers. First baseman, Whipple and Crane for a quick chat on the mound. And Crane slings the rosin bag to the ground. And I think Coach Rodriguez here will take a slow walk to the mound and attempt to buy some time here for a reliever. A lot of asked of Kevin Crane here this afternoon, especially with the offensive slumber that the uh, Bellman Bats have four seats tonight at the Giants game. suffered for much Roll of this ball, game. But the three runs right in the fourth, the and now the run here in the Fifth inning, May and Crane's afternoon, rather prematurely. Crane four and two on the year. As we mentioned, 1.71 1 ERA, 0, 22 1, hits conceded. Zero, 32 three, and two thirds innings pitch coming one, into this afternoon's game. Zero, one, zero, three, one. And the home plate umpire out to break up the conference here. You can tell by the body language of Coach Rodriguez that this will just buy time for a reliever to come in. So Crane exits. He'll get a round of applause as he head back, as he head back to the dugout. And we'll give you the name of the reliever here momentarily. The new Bellman pitcher will be we number Martinez, 17, the driver for the Bellman Austin Freud, a senior right-hander. You guys that are riding home on the bus for Bellman, you better find another driver because she's leaving right now. So here's Freud. So there was, while well, we've got a moment here, there was a ticket giveaway to tonight's Rockies and Giants game. The winner has just been announced, and the aforementioned winner, no doubt, on her way with the quickness to AT&T Park. Certainly with all the traffic, they want to get a move on. So Freud making his fifth appearance. 
four and a third innings pitched now on the season with one save. So Freud summoned by Coach Rodriguez to mop up here, and he's certainly got some work to do. Base is loaded. And Mark Cardinale step into the plate. Cardinale doubled in the fourth, grounded out 6-3 in the second. He also scored and had an RBI in the fourth inning. So big ask of Freud here to try and prevent the Lancers from inflicting further damage on the Bells here. Freud's first delivery is high for ball one. Tyler Deason will follow for St. Francis. Freud's delivery low, one and one. Looking from the third base side, the senior right-hander. It's the call. It was a compact delivery, certainly rears up a little bit as he gets ready to release the ball. And springs forward all in one motion. And the count correction, 3-0. and oh. Now it's 3-1, and one, so three balls to start out from Fried. Now gets one over the plate. 3-1, and one, then the count to Cardinale. Tyler Deason to follow. Base is loaded. Now pitches in there for a strike. Good pitch by Freud over at the knees. So it's Gabor at third. Johnson at second. Cesnar at first. That pitch is swung on. Foul back to the screen by Cardinale. So the count remains full. Johnson again pinch running for Hunter Simmons. He singled earlier on in the inning. Gabor walked. And that is now on third. Another delivery fouled off into the screen by Cardinale, so the count remains full. Fried battling in this at bat. This is the eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Went 3-0 to open the at-bat. Two consecutive strikes, two consecutive balls fouled off behind the plate. Pitch number eight of the at-bat on its way from the senior. Here it is, it's low. And no place to put Cardinale, so he walks. Gabor comes home. Johnson the third, and Cesnara down the second. 7-0, the Lancers lead. And here comes Tyler Deason, his third Deason. plate appearance of the day. Struck out in the second, popped out to first in the fourth. Still looking for his first hit of the day. Deason and Cor Peterson, the only players without a base hit today for the Lancers. Here's a delivery from Freud. It is low, but in there for a strike. Chris Baker will follow. And the Bells looking still for their first out of this bottom of the fifth inning. No balls in the strike then to Deason. Fry's delivery is swung on and missed. 0-2. Oh, two delivering them from Freud as well, shy of the target. Here comes Johnson to the plate in time. He's safe. Johnson alertly takes off on the pass ball. And it's 8-0 St. Francis. 
Freud's delivery is about three feet short, bounced off of Whipple behind the catcher's position, and Johnson was running as soon as he saw it go past the catcher, and he slides in underneath the tag. So it's 8-0. Decent waves at that one. And he's gone swinging for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Chris Baker. As you mentioned, until St. Francis encountered Amador Valley back on Thursday of last week, they scored 24 runs in two games. Beat Dublin 13-4 in the Elite Eight tournament opener and then defeated Palm of Salinas 11-1. There's a delivery to Baker that's over for a strike. So in that game against Palmer, Stram had three hits, two doubles. Simmons had a triple and a single. Cardinale had two hits. I think he had two hits in the game against Dublin as well. And they've certainly not cooled off. Definitely facing a strong Amador Valley team out of Pleasanton. Stram struck out 10 in that game. Walk two and hit two batters, but really giving Amador Valley no chance. Pitch over for a uh, ball, excuse me, so the count evens at one and one to Baker. Amador Valley's pitch Jake Dronk as though had an excellent game as well. Dronk has given up just the three hits and the one run, but it was all the Lancers needed to take that Elite Eight title game. Pitch that to Baker over for a ball. Eric Peterson, the danger man, coming up next. Peterson was 3-3 three three against Dublin with a triple three RBIs and two runs scored in that game. Pitch to Baker, hit him. Well, he, certainly not the place you want to get hit. Right around the elbow. That pitch inside from Freud. Designated so bases remain loaded. So it says Nara now down at third. Cardinale at second. Baker after being hit by a pitch on first. Remember, third base was open momentarily because Johnson took home plate on the pass ball. And we've got a second change in reliever here. And we're going to take a quick break. And when we give the new Bellman pitches some time to warm up, we'll be right back on KMVT 15's presentation of high school baseball. Hi, I'm Ricky Appler with Spartan Sports Camp. Brought to you by the Mountain View High School Athletic Department, Spartan Sports Camp offers multi-sport camps for kids in grades 3 through 6, as well as sport-specific camps for grades 6 through 9. We give campers the opportunity to receive instruction from the Mountain View High School coaching staff and student-athletes. Strength camps are also available throughout the summer. For registration info, visit our website at www.spartansportscamp.com. Sessions begin June 10th and run weekly through August 2nd. We look forward to seeing you this summer. The junior Joe Shaminsky summoned from the bullpen to attempt to mop up here for the Bells, trailing 8-0 here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And well, the Lancers have certainly blown this game open at the moment. Bellman and having trouble recording outs. Austin Fry did strike out Tyler Deason for the first out of the inning, but bases are loaded currently. And Eric Peterson has been a real threat in this game so far. Singled and scored in the third. Reached on an error in the fourth. And stole second. Bases loaded here for the Lancers in the bottom of the fifth. Shaminsky's pitch is swung on and missed. So Shaminsky with two quick strikes to Eric Peterson. 
Peterson Brothers here. Eric batting ninth, Court batting first. Court Peterson still looking for his first hit of the afternoon. Shaminsky's pitch at the ladders just a little too high, so ball and two strikes. So it's Cesnara on third, Cardinale on second, and Chris Baker at first after being hit by a pitch, which ended the afternoon of Austin Freud. Here's Shaminsky's pitch, curveball low, and the count evens at two and two. An hour and 50 minutes or so into this game, bottom of the fifth inning here. A beautiful afternoon at Higgins Field, not a cloud in the sky. 75 degrees at first pitch. That's perfect springtime weather for baseball. Two and two count then from Shaminsky. That one's fouled off by Peterson, and he stays alive. Shaminsky certainly with a fastball to be reckoned with and he's dialed it up a number of times already in this at bat. As we mentioned Freud able to get the get the out but walk Catanali and then hit Baker. Bookend in the strikeout of Deason. Now that pitch low from Shaminsky and Eric Peterson has a full count. Court Peterson on deck. And the top of the Lancer order. No place to put Eric Peterson then. And a full count here with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Wind tapering off slightly from the start of this game. Here's a pitch fouled back up off the screen. Count remains full. Eric Peterson, formerly of St. Catherine of Siena, junior high school, as was his brother Court. Both seniors. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit. Shallow center field. That should score Cesnara from third base, and it does. So Peterson gave that one a ride. Justin Calamini underneath it for the Bells. That scores Cesnara from third base. Now batting center field. And another RBI then Number for two, Peterson. Peterson. Inside pitch swung on. Calamini, few steps over to his left to reel that one in. The throw back to the infield, not in time to get the hustling Cesnara down third base line. So 9-0 now, St. Francis lead. Runners on first and second for the Lancers. Here's Court Peterson, as we mentioned, looking for his first base hit of the afternoon. Grounded out 4-3 in the first, grounded out 1-3 in the third, and then 4-3 again in the fourth inning. This is his fourth at bat of the afternoon. Deason and Cole Peterson again, the only Lancers without a hit at the moment. So the only Lancers not to get on base as well. So Cole Peterson here quickly down two strikes. Runner on second, Cardinale. The runner on first, Chris Baker for the Lancers. Shaminsky working from the third base side. Gets the sign he likes from Whipple. Quick glance back to second. Long lead taken by um, Chris Baker over here at first. Pitch is foul back to the screen by Peterson, so the count remains at 0-2. 9-0, the Lancers lead. Just the one hit managed by Bellman, and with this extended bottom of the fifth, the chances grow ever slighter that John Gavin will be back for the sixth inning, although with the 
economical way that he's pitched so far today. Might not be a stretch to see him out for the sixth inning, although it's certainly been a long layoff between the last time he was out on the hill. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Cor Peterson. That's low in the dirt. Ball and two strikes. Third pitcher of the afternoon then for the Bells, Joe Shaminsky, a junior. This is his pitcher and an outfielder for this Bells team. One, two to Court Peterson, swung on and hit to left field. And that's gonna go all the way, to, actually he's gonna bounce to the wall. And that should clear the bases, it does. Round third comes Cardinale, he'll score, as does Baker and Court Peterson all the way around the third base with a triple. The future Bruin absolutely smashed that offering from Shaminsky right over the middle of the plate. Yeah, great piece of camera work there to be sure. And no one even within range of that one as it rolls to the wall. Peterson standing at third. Two RBIs on the hit. And in his fourth plate appearance of the day, Peterson's finally on base. As Cardinale scores from second and Baker all the way from first. It's 11-0 St. Francis now. Shaminsky a shake of the head and well, that pretty much sums up the Bells afternoon here at Higgins Field. Two outs in the inning. And we've got a pinch hitter here for St. Francis. It will be the junior Joey Shimono batting in place of Strem. So Joey Shimono, a right-handed bat. His first plate appearance of the day. And it's a two ball, no strike count in his favor. The Lances have batted around now in the inning. Stram opened this inning, reaching on the E3, scored. Six runs now in this bottom of the fifth inning. It's a 3-0 count to, to, uh, to Shimono, and he walks on four pitches. Out comes Coach Rodriguez once again. And I think we're about to see another pitching change here. So Shaminsky's outing is a short one. And Bellman will bring out the fourth pitcher of the afternoon. It will be Spencer Ladd. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back in just a moment. Wholesale changes here for both teams. The fourth pitch of the afternoon for Bellman spends the lad. The right-hander takes the hill. Batting now for uh, for St. Francis in place of Austin Gabor is the junior Ryan McSwain. So certainly some of the bench players here for Coach Oakland having a chance to get some swings in. And after first pitch ball to McSwain from Spencer Ladd. Ladd fires back with a strike. So count evens at one and one here. Two outs in the inning. Runner on third, Court Peterson after the 
Bases clearing triple. There's a curveball from Ladd. Misses inside. It's two and one. Second pinch hitter of the inning then. As the days of Stram and Gabor are most certainly over. One and two count then. For Ladd. And his curveball is in there for a strike. And for the Bells, the end of that inning couldn't come soon enough. Five runs on five hits, no errors. And after five complete, it's St. Francis 11, Bellman 0. We are back then for the top of the sixth inning. Top of the order then for Bellman. Some wholesale changes really for both teams. And we'll begin with the, uh, uh, the batter here for Bellman. Be number two. Austin Hatfield, and he ropes that one to second base. Fielded cleanly by one of the four new players out on the field for St. Francis, Champy Luca there, making a nice play on the line drive from the senior Austin Hatfield. Hot, uh, Hatfield was batting in place of Joey Persons. So he lines that one to short. What's second, excuse me, for the first out of the inning. And that brings up Jarvis. And Jarvis sends that one to left field for a base hit. We didn't even have time to tell you that the new pitcher, Matt Bell, has come on in place of uh, John Gavin. Who almost certainly now will take his seventh victory of the season. Five innings, six Ks, three walks, one hit given up, no runs. And on the first pitch, here's the replay. You see Jarvis stroke that one to the left over the leaping third baseman, Joey Shimono. So Joey Shimono's taken over at third base for Chris Baker. Champaluki's taken over at second for Michael Stram. Eric Benedetti is taken over at catcher for Tim Cesnara. And then, of course, Matt Bell has taken over on the mound for John Gavin. So I believe that's all the changes, as well as Hatfield batting for Persons for the Bells. <laughs> as far as I can tell, the outfield remains the same for the Lancers here at the moment. So one out in the inning. And after Hatfield lined out, Jarvis at the bat. And Bell first offering. To Jarvis sent to left field for a base hit. So that brings up Whipple. Pitch in there for a strike. So one and one the count. Bell making his sixth appearance of the season. Four innings pitch. Has a victory. No saves. That one fouled off. Right side, so the count goes to one and two to Jake Whipple. Andrew Mallon should follow here for the Bells. Well, with this game's outcome long since decided. One, two is inside, two and two. Whipple walked in the first, doubled in the fourth, and then was picked off second base. And that was when the game was still within reach for the Bells. I think the score was only 2-0 at that point. The Bells had Whipple on second base with one out in the inning. And when Whipple was picked off second base, it kind of seemed to take all the wind out of the sails of the Bells. And the Lancers have not looked back since, piling on nine runs, 11 in total. And they lead this game by 11. It's three and two count then to Whipple. Here's a delivery, swung on and fouled off the top of the screen, and it rolls off the netting out of play. Might have been momentarily playable if Benedetti certainly discarded the mask, trying to keep an eye on the ball, which comes to rest on top of the netting here above home plate. <laughs> The count remains full to Whipple. Out, 
One out in the inning. None on here for, or Whipalong, excuse me, and he swings and misses through that pitch. So Whipple's gone looking, and that will bring up the next batter. They will have a pinch hitter here for Andrew Mallon, be Dylan Toppening. Number 26, Dylan Toppening. Chance of top come up from the Bell's dugout. Here's the delivery from Bell. And slow for ball one. So Toppening making his first appearance of the day. Just his sixth at bat of the year. Has two hits and an RBI though on the season so far. And count goes 2-0. Two zero is in there for strikes. The count goes two and one. <laughs> Right-handed Bell working from the first base side. He is in for the sign. His two one. Outside for a ball. So good at bat here from Toppening. Hit his count, perhaps, but has Jarvis on first. Try and get some runs on the board, and he'll take ball four. So Toppening walks, and that will send Jarvis down to second. Another pinch hitter up there for Bellerman. Alec Iniguez. Will bat in place of Calamini. Now batting is number four, Alec Iniguez. So the third pinch hitter of the inning then for the Bells. And Iniguez fouls that one off right side. No balls and a strike. Top inning after drawing a walk on five pitches is on first. Jarvis after single is on second base. The two on here for the Bells in the top of the six. And although it wouldn't be, wouldn't mean much in terms of the game, it certainly would brighten the spirits of the Bells players to at least put a run or two on the board. Not have to face a dreaded shutout to their eternal rivals here, St. Francis. Two and one the count. Two in guess. Dude, I made fun of you first. <laughs> Pitch oh. is hit to short, line to short for the third out. So the Bells just can't get anything going on offense here today. So Iniguez lines out to second. Two left on. No errors and two men left on base. And through five and a half, it's St. Francis 11, Bellman zero. Number seven, Ryan Johnson. Back with you then for the bottom of the sixth inning. Connor Ridley will be the fifth pitcher of the afternoon for Bellman, the junior, making his third appearance of the season. And the right hand is first delivery is over for a strike. And this will be Ryan Johnson then making his first Played appearance of the day. He came on as a pinch runner for Hunter Simmons in the last inning, scoring. And has a one and one count here in his first at bat of the day. So it'll be Johnson, we assume Benedetti and Cardinale for the Lancers in this inning. Remember Benedetti taking over at catcher for Tim Sosnara. And at the moment, no change in personnel at first base for Coach Oakland. And we will see what happens here. Ground into short, fielded on a hop, throws across in time for the outs. This play by the shortstop there, charging in. 
Scotty Jarvis. Confident throw to first for the first out of the inning. Now batting is catcher number 27, Eric Benedetti. So Benedetti then will make his first plate appearance in of the afternoon. Again, coming in as a pinch runner for Tim Sasnara after he singled in the fifth. One out in the inning for Ridley. The right hand is fastball, is in there for a strike. So Ridley not taking a lot of time to get sailed in here. The tall right-hander working from the center of the rubber. Leans back with the off-speed pitch. A beauty, and it's in there for strikes. So no balls, two strikes here to Benedetti. Take an extra cut outside the box. Now steps to the plate. Young two is low for ball. The Lances have a pinch hitter on deck in place of Mark Cardinale. Brody Nakama will get his first appearance after Banadetti is gone on strikes. 11-0 St. Francis lead here, bottom of the six. Here's Brody Nakama, the senior. Number 23, Brody Nakama. Let's go, bro. You got Brodus. Yet to get a hit in his five at bats this season. And he swings on the first pitch, gives that a ride to center field. Going back to center fielder, and he makes a catch over his head for the third out. Well, Nakama certainly gave that one a ride. But it dies about. 15 feet shy of the warning track. And a nice running catch made out there in center by Niguez. So through six, it's St. Francis 11, Bellman zero. Bailey Owen summoned to finish this one off for the Lances. Usual co closer Mark Cadenali. No real need to bring him out for the seventh inning here. So instead, they've turned to the senior, Bailey Owen, making his seventh appearance of the season. No wins, no losses, no saves. Six and the third innings pitched, and his first delivery is over for a strike. And his second delivery to Colby Poonian is fouled off left side. So Poonian struck out in the second, struck out in the fifth. And it's a strike away from striking out for a third time on the day. Owen with the glove up. Short delivery, here it is. Curveball is swung on, foul tipped at the plate. He'll stay alive. James Gaffs will bat next, and then we'll see if Brandon Wong will represent the third at bat of the inning. That one is lasered from Owen. Benedetti rising to reel that one in, one and two. Pitch is swung on and missed. Poonian strikes out for the third time today. As Owen blows it by him. The ninth strikeout for Lance's pitches today, and well, Owen's got somewhere to go because he's ready to pitch. Here's Gaffs. He walked back in the fifth. It's number 18, James Jaffes. Gaff is quickly down two strikes now. Maybe Owen won the tickets to the Giants game. I don't know. These are quickly two strikes here. The 0-2. Oh, I was at the knees, but just a little low. One and two.
Looking from the first base side. Here's the one, two from Owen. Benedetti does well to get down and cover that one. Two and two, the count. Owen's 2-2 two -two is low. Full count. One away here in the top of the seventh inning. Owen's on the full count with the fastball. It's lined to second base. They have it on a hop, fires across. Not in time. Nakama unable to scoop that one off the dirt. It's a good throw from Champy Luca. He had to range out to his left here. Grounded between the second baseman and the bag, but Luca's throw just a little late. A little too strong for the common handle. So Gaffis reaches. We'll call it a single. That brings up the next batter for the Bells. <laughs> Current batter is number three, Marquez Honorado. Making his first appearance today in place of Brandon Wong. That one's popped up to shallow center. Coming in to make the catch is the center fielder, and that's two outs. So Honorado is gone on the fly out to center. Court Peterson still in the game for the Lancers. Making a long run into Chell center field to reel that one in. And Bellman are down to the last at bat. Runner on first is Gaffers. Owens delivery is swung on and fouled back by Dylan Steele. Steele walked in the third, flew out in the fifth. And this is his third at bat of the day. Down a strike. St. Francis looking to finish this one off right here. Leading by 11. Off-speed pitch is in there for strike. And the bell's down to their final strike. This is the designated hitter, number 16, Dylan Steele. So Steele represents the final chance for the bells here. The 0-2 is low. One and two the count. St. Francis should improve to 18 and one. And then they'll play the one team that's beaten them this, or the team leading the league here in the West, Count, West Catholic Athletic League, Valley Christian. Here's the delivery, swung on and hit to left. Under it is, oh, it drops in. He let it go, mix up between the left fielder and the shortstop there. Oh, miscommunication there between McSwain And the shortstop. It's Tyler Holm out playing short here in the ninth inning in a defensive substitution I missed. And a little mix up there between Holm and McSwain. So the ball drops in for a hit. And now Bellman have runners on the corners. You have two out. Owen's pitch is high to Hatfield. So Hatfield's making his first or second. Uh, Played appearance of the day, lined out in the six. That pitch gets past the catch of a Benedetti over here to the near side to reel that one in. So Gaffis is on third after the single. Steele on first after reaching on the error. Steal a bright spot on the bases today for the Bells. Reached twice. That pitch is swung on and hit to right center field. Playable. And St. Francis will go to the third out and take the victory here against Bellman in convincing style. 11-0 victory over the Bells here at Higgins Field. Final totals then. Lance's 11 runs on 10 hits. No errors. The Bells, no runs on four hits. And two errors.
as we mentioned, St. Francis will go on to face Valley Christian in three days' time. A game to be played in San Jose. And that game, no doubt, for the lead of the West Catholic Athletic League for the Bells. Their next game will be on Thursday as they host Palo Alto. So Pally making the trip down to San Jose to face the Bells. KMVT 15's producer and director for the day, Bobby Chastain, camera Tim Erskine, Janet Wu, and Luis Costa. Special thanks to St. Francis High School and to Dave Osorio, the assistant athletic director. My name is Stephen Davies. Thank you for joining us on KMVT 15 Mountain View. Cupertino, Los Altos. Once again, your final score, St. Francis, 11, Bellman, 0. We look forward to seeing you next time on KMVT 15 High School Sports. We look forward to it. See you then. Bye-bye.